about what autofiling is. So what is autofiling? Uh, we're talking about a way to place documents or records in the appropriate cabinet drawer uh, or and folder using a schema-based rule. So this is about moving documents into the right location based on the document's metadata, which is linked to the document schema. So it can be unique information or general information. Either way is both accessible for it. Now, these can be, this metadata can be descriptive metadata. That's the information that you're tagging to the documents or the administrative metadata. That's the information that FileHold is controlling. So we can use either that descriptive or that administrative metadata to define what those locations are going to be. Now, this process can also create structure. So today, we're only going to be touching on this a very little bit towards the end. What we're really going to be focusing on is building out a template and making it work for us. And then we're going to take a deeper dive into some of that later on. Uh, again, as I was saying before, we can do this as a template or we can do it from a script-based rule. The script base is a programming way. The template is using the interface itself. So it's using a GUI interface to be able to get the information on there. And it's typically, as I understand, a lot easier to use than the script, which I don't even know how to do. Now, it can be employed optionally. You're not forcing people to use autofiling. It's something that can be used wherever you'd like to. It's also something I should mention that can be used by the automated document importation feature. So you can create some very complex rules that then the uh, headless way of bringing documents in automatically can deploy that in order to file them correctly. It's the opposite of auto-tagging, which some of you may uh, see in the system. So auto-tagging uses the document's location to determine metadata, auto-filing, uses the metadata to determine the document's location. So they are the opposite ideas and the two don't play very well together. So we wanna make sure that uh, if you're introducing this process, that you're not introducing this process where you're already using an auto tagging function because it will conflict. Now there's another concept that uh, is worth mentioning here and that's a merge tag. Now I've discussed this in some of our prior webinars before, but just as a quick overview, uh, merge tags are used to insert information into documents or into document metadata. It's a way of grabbing information that already exists and pushing it to another spot. So we can use that to create watermarks on a document. We can use that uh, to update uh, the file information in a Word file, for example, so it can automatically populate inside of the document when you open it. Uh, we can use it for uh, creating uh, sign-off sheets from workflows. So after a workflow is complete, there's a sign-off sheet there. And we can also leverage that information to be used for an auto-filing rule, which is where we're going to be looking at this today. Now, that those merge tags can be administrative or descriptive metadata. It can also be file hold process information, such as the workflow status, so that this was approved or this was not approved. We can use that as information as well. Now, there's some syntax we're going to need for that. We're going to touch on this more later, but I just want to point out square brackets, uh, the diagonal brackets, and the uh, pipe, which is the straight up and down. On my keyboard, it's the one just above the enter key. If you shift and hit that, that's your pipe. We're going to use that uh, within our merge tags in order to separate values. Again, I'm putting this on here just so that people can see it, but we'll take a deeper dive into this in a moment. And so with that, let's take a look at autofiling. So I'm just going to enter, uh, exit out of my PowerPoint here. And, whoops, there we go. So we're gonna start off with going over to our administrative window within FileHold. So you can see I'm logged into the web client here. So I'm just gonna head over to my full administration menu. And then from here, I'm gonna head down to library configuration, settings, and general. This is where we're gonna start off here because I wanna show where you activate the auto filing functions. So before you do anything else, you have to turn auto filing on within your system. So you can come down to here and you can say, Allow user to select autofiling option when adding documents and make sure that's checked. Now, autofiling can still work, but it means that users won't be able to access it. So sometimes you have organizations who are only using autofiling with ADI. And in those cases, if they're only doing it with ADI, that's where they may want to have this turned off. But in our case, we're going to be doing this as a user activated process. So that's perfect. So we've got that turned on. Now, before I go any deeper into this, let's talk about what I want to achieve, because I think that's an important detail. Now I'm going to start off over here with Smart Soft Capture. For those of you who've not used it, this is our uh, tool for finding information on documents. You see I've scanned an invoice into the system. Capture has gone over top of it, found different metadata fields, and tagged that information to the document, which is perfect. Now over here, I can then define information on it so I can choose, you know, uh, who's actually the, uh, you know, the vendor on this one. So in this case, we've got Premium Springs Water 
Company Incorporated, and I've got my metadata tags for this document. And then I can export this anytime I want to just with the export button. Now, the reason I'm doing this way is because I'm actually going to export this document multiple times to test out my auto filing template. So in this case, let's imagine I've got a, a process where I'm bringing invoices in and I want to file them in different locations. So when an invoice arrives, I want that uh, invoice to always go to the incoming invoices section of my folder over here. So we're going to use and we're going to create ourselves an auto filing rule to make that happen. So let's get started with that. We're going to begin by heading down over to again, we're going to go back into our web client. And this is where we can have access to the auto filing templates, which is the bottom over here, library configuration, auto filing templates. So our auto filing templates are, you see, I've got some of them already built here. We're going to make ourselves a quick uh, auto filing template, which is going to be a very standardized template. This is not going to be one with a great deal of automation in it for our first time. Again, we're just experimenting with this through to make sure everything works. So let's go ahead and click on the add up here. And we're now going to build ourselves an auto filing template of the system. So we're going to call this SmartSoft Capture Invoices. Right, so I know what the process is that's related to this, and I can give a description here uh, for use with capture when importing invoices. Simple explanation: the description is not required; it's completely optional. You have to give it a name, but you don't have to give it a description. But we're, I'm going to use one anyway. Schema where used is blank because I'm just building my template for the first time. Now this template is smart, and it will occasionally through here test and validate your process before it lets you actually exit out of here. So I can't just do a save right now because it has nothing to validate. So we need to build some things first or else I'm essentially canceling this. Summary tab over here is vague because I don't have anything defined. We're gonna start doing that in a moment. So I've got each of these categories that I can define. So let's just uh, circle back for a second. I'm gonna hop back over to file hold. Remember that all your documents in file hold must live inside of a folder. Folders must live inside of drawers. Drawers must live inside of cabinets. So we can see I've got my three levels here. We have an optional fourth level, which is our, do I have an example for you? to do a folder group. And a folder group is just different groups of uh, folders that can go into here. Think of a folder group like a sub drawer. It's the same kind of idea. It's just a way of uh, visually organizing the documents, not real structure, just uh, visual organization for the documents. In order to file a document, we must define the document's schema, we must define its cabinet and we must define its folders. We have to define all three of those before I can put the document in. So what auto filing is going to let me do is put this document in the right folder as soon as it comes in to satisfy those requirements based on the document schema. So we've already defined the schema, which means we can define the folder, which therefore also defines the cabinet and it saves us a lot of steps of activity. So in our case here, we want to direct all these documents to the incoming invoices section. This is where we want these to live. So let's keep that in mind. And we're going to head back over to our template. And we need to define our cabinet drawer, no folder group in this case, and then a folder definition. So we're going to establish what each of these are going to be. Library properties. We can allow uh, an auto filing rule to create library objects as it builds. So once we start to employ the rule, we say we put our documents in the right place. So I want to put this in the uh, company. It's an invoice from file hold. So I want to put it in a folder named file hold. If there is no folder there named file hold, I want the system to create uh, a, that object, which I can do with auto filing can create library objects. So that's what we're going to be uh, looking at a little bit later. For right now, we're not going to worry about that. We're also not going to worry about the template because if I'm creating objects, I have to have a template object for it to be based on. And in this case, I'm not going to worry about that. I can also change those properties, which we're not dealing with in this case. So we're basically going to skip this tab for now until we start introducing those merge tags later on. Now we're going to define our cabinet. So we're going to come over to cabinet and click on add. And then we're just going to give it a name for the cabinet, which in this case is, and this is where having moving between the two uh, interfaces is good. It's going to be called accounting. So we can see that onto there. So now you'll notice it's not giving me an option here for something to pick from. That's because remember this can potentially create objects. And so I want it to be able to, uh, if it's spelled differently or has a different name for it, I want it to have that as a name. Again, not going to give it a description. I don't need to, and I'm not going to use the search or the match. We'll be dealing with that in the next session. We're not going to worry about that for now. And I'm going to click apply. So I've got our cabinet name is accounting, our drawer. Well, our drawer, if we remember, is AP. So let's come back over to here and we're going to add and we're going to call this AP. So far, this is all very simple and we're going to say apply. 
Now we can go to folder group. We're not going to use folder group, so I'm not going to check the include. And finally, I'm going to go to our folder and we're going to add a folder into this here. And this is where I'm going to come back over here and it's called incoming invoices. And so now we type incoming invoices. Perfect. So we've got our name for our folder and we apply. So now we can add this into here and we've got three sets of values that we can use. We have a cabinet drawer and a folder. So I can come over here to test values and I can ask this to validate, right? Validation completed without errors. So there's, uh, there's nothing to test over here because I'm not using any merge tags. So I didn't need to go to that tab, but I just wanted to hit the validate on the end. Everything's working. No reason to validate again because I haven't made any changes. So I can now click on add and that's now going to add this auto filing template into the system. So it's now available. Um, oh, I have a duplicate name there. So let's go back over to my general tab. That's my mistake. So let's just change this to SSC invoices and we'll add that into there. I had an old tag with that old name. So I don't really need the word capture in there. That was redundant anyway. So, all right, we can now go back to our list so I can close this out. And it's gonna show me my four different uh, my four different uh, templates over here, including my, uh, sure enough, there is my old one that I had in the system. So, uh, so we're going to use our SSC invoices and that's what we're going to use to create our, uh, we're going to use this to now um, uh, leverage off of and, we're, and apply this to the documents. Now, because we've made a template, I now have to associate it with the document type. It's not gonna be available for every kind of document. It's just the ones that I want it to be used for. So we're gonna come over to our document schemas and then we're going to select our invoices. I've got my AP invoices over here. And then from within that, we're going to go into our edit. So I'm gonna click on edit schema and then I'm gonna go over to auto filing and we're going to turn auto filing on and automatically detect or create a destination folders for files based on auto filing rules. And we're going to use an auto filing template as opposed to a script. And then we're going to select out of here, SSC invoices. And that's effectively it. So now that I've done that, I can save that. Perfect. And we've now associated that with our process. So we've got everything sort of worked together now. All right, now we're gonna head back over to my desktop application and we're going to do a quick refresh. And the reason we're doing a refresh is because I've changed my settings in the background. And when I change my settings in the web client, you should always come back and do a refresh within the desktop application. Perfect. So now that I've got that, I can select my document and you see there's an auto file button up here. Now, if you didn't, if you're using file hold right now and you don't see auto file up there, it's because in your settings, you don't have that auto filing checkbox to allow the users to be able to auto file a document. So when I click on this, it's now going to run the auto filing rule that I put against it. And you can see the going to is now defined, accounting, AP, incoming invoices. And now I can send my document, it processes it, clears it from the inbox. We can come down over here to incoming invoices. And this is the document uh, that I had, is this one here, because the uh, metadata was incorrect before. It said file hold, it should have said uh, the, um, uh, it should have said the uh, the water systems, but this is good enough for now. I've managed to move the document into here. We're just doing this for testing purposes only. So I've established the auto filing rule works. It found the location. Now that's perfect if you want to send the document to the same place every time. Those of you who are file hold users will know that that same function is similar to when we create a watched folder and I can direct uh, to a single library location. And indeed, when I'm using um, SmartSoft, um, capture, it does have within the manage imports process. So let's just go into my SSC over here. I can already choose a single location to send it to without using an auto filing rule. Now, in this case, I asked this to automatically send files to the auto filing location defined in the document schema that was built into my manage import rule for when I bring a document over from capture, it automatically puts the schema based rule. I could put a separate rule if I wanted to um, within the manage import so that it does a different process than the average thing I'm gonna do with the document. You can only have one auto filing template per schema, but you can use a different one if you, if you want to within the manage import. All of which is just detail. What I'm saying with this is, I've created something that's very basic, but it's so basic, it's probably not super useful. So now let's go back and revise our template and start to introduce some of these merge tags to it to make it a little bit smarter. So let's go back and take a look over here at my folder. Now I used incoming invoices, which requires the user to then go into this, find the document they want and move it to the right place. That's an inefficiency. Instead, let's do this so the document goes to the right place automatically. So we're going to send this to the right part of the library 
just by running it through. So we're going to start with that by saying, I want these documents to go into the 2022 folder. So let's go back over to capture. Um, I think I'm using, we're using a very old document here. So I'm just going to update that to 22. Again, testing purposes only. Use an old document, best way to do it. And now that I've done that, I'm going to, let's just add them to the list. And we're now going to do an export again. So we push the document out. We're going to go back over into file hold. And now we're waiting for that to get picked up, which is probably through the managed import rules, which I then have to select and start two of two. There it is, it's picked up the document. There it is sitting and ready to be processed further. And it's already applied that same auto filing rule I had to before by defining the going to, and we can see the metadata is accurate here. Now this time, let's make, uh, let's update our auto filing rule and send this to the right place. So we wanna send this over to our, uh, tw we wanna send this to a 2022 folder instead of sending it over to here. But we want it to use the invoice date information on this. We don't want it to be a stock rule. So that way when I hit 2023, I don't have to worry about going back and updating my auto filing rule. It's taking care of that for me automatically. So let's do a couple of different iterations of this and I'll show you how we can hone this out. So we're gonna start by going back into our uh, web client. And from here, we're gonna go into the auto filing templates. And then once our templates have loaded, we're going to select our SSC invoices, select and edit. And now we're gonna make some changes to it. So the cabinet, we always want it to be the accounting because we know that's not changing. The drawer also wants to be AP. So there's no problems there. We can keep that fixed, but we want to change the folder. So now we're gonna update our folder rule. And instead of it just being folder name, incoming invoices, taking it as red, I'm instead now going to use a merge tag. So we're gonna start off by letting file hold know we are entering merge tag information, which we do with the two square brackets. So that's letting file hold know what you're about to receive is a merge tag piece of information. I then need to let it know what kind of information I'm bringing across. Is this a system value? Is this something related to an ID on the document? Or is this a metadata field? In this case, I'm using the invoice date, which is a metadata field, descriptive metadata of my own. So we type in MD for the metadata. And now we need to let uh, the merge tag know that we're going to stop this and now give an expression as to what the value is that we're looking for. And in this case, we put up a pipe. So we just do shift and then the backslash key, which puts the pipe in there for me. And now I can put in my value, which in this case is invoice date. That's all I wanna do for now. Now I know that we've got, there's more than I'm gonna do to this, but again, we're testing things through and I don't mind testing things through. So we're going to do two square brackets to close it. And now we're going to apply. So now that I've put a metadata field into this, I wanna come back over to here and test the values. And now we're going to, there we go. So test values, invoice date, and it gave me an example of what it is there. So it knows it's gonna be able to read an invoice date because that's the proper formatting for it. And we're going to save this now uh, as our uh, updated merge tag. So we've built our first and our most uh, simple uh, merge tag that we're gonna be using. So. Uh, now that we've done that, we're going to go back over to our document schemas. And I know it's already on there, but I'm just double checking because when I'm in testing mode, I always like to look and look again. So yes, SSC invoices is still there. That's great. Let's go back over to here and we're going to do our refresh again because I've changed the rule for it. So now that I've changed the rule, I'm probably going to have to run this through an auto filing rule on the inbox again. So we're going to select our document, click on auto file. And there it is. Now notice it's given me a red onto here. If the red says that the folder does not yet exist in the library and will not be created, well, that's gonna be an issue for me. Now we need to go back to our auto filing template because there's a set of settings I didn't change into this. We're gonna go into our auto filing template and now we're going to ask it to create, so it's not gonna be able to create it based on the date. Now I already have the date information built into the document so I can simply update this. So right before I create objects, cause I wanna cover that next time, what we're going to do is we're going to refine our folder settings. So we're going to go into our settings for this again, and we're going to put another pipe in because I want to give some formatting control. I'm going to use just the year because that's how I'm filing my documents. So now it's metadata. What kind of metadata? The invoice date. Any values on that? Just the year. Thank you. And now we're going to apply that. Perfect. And now we're going to validate and save. Validation completed without errors. Perfect. So we've now built that through. And now that I've done that, 
guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to go back over to my desktop application. We're going to refresh that. There we go. And we're going to run, select our document and run our auto filing again. All black this time, ready to send because we know that, that uh, we already have a 2022 there and it's found that. Now, what if our document uh, had different metadata than that? What if it was 2021? So let's go into this and we're going to change this to 2021 and save that. And then we're going to click auto filing again and it finds a 2021 folder. So now when I send this, we're going to find our document over here in 2021. And there's our document added right over here. And we can see added with a timestamp that matches the timestamp when we're doing the webinar. So we know this is working now. We can take this a step further by introducing a slight level of automation. The way I'm bringing these documents across is using the manage import function. So I'm going to go back over here to manage imports. And we're going to go into our SmartSoft invoices settings. And we're going to ask this to automatically watch for files and tag and bring them into the inbox. And I'm also going to ask it to run the auto filing rule automatically. And this time, instead of it, uh, I'm going to choose to run this one off invoices. The reason it had, I wanted to point something out here. If I turn this off, oftentimes the send files will turn off. Once I turn this on, only then does it become active. And that's because captured uh, or manage imports doesn't know if there's actually a rule on that document or not. And so it may not be able to automate it. If I select the template over here, then I can ask it to automatically send files to the library with a status of ready to send. So my goal here is to try to eliminate the manual processing that I just did on the document. We're now we're going to say OK to that. So now we've updated our document over here. Let's come back to SmartSoft. Now, uh, yeah, SmartSoft, and we're going to change our date this time to uh, 2017. So let's just make sure I've got a 2017 folder. I do. Let's go over here into file hold. We're just going to wait in the 2017 folder, and I'm going to go back into capture. And now that I've updated this to 2017, we're going to do an export. So that's push the document out. We're going to come back over here to file hold. Now we're waiting for manage imports to do is find that document sitting in its destination folder, bring it into file hold, apply any of the metadata to it uh, with the document type, and then run the auto filing rule over top and put the document into the right area based on the document's name. And if I've done this right, the document should appear within this. And there it is. So it took about uh, 20 seconds to do that. That's not unusual. The, uh, that function's going to work every 30 seconds or so. So it went out, it found the document and brought it in. From a user point of view, they had no additional involvement in that other than hitting that export button in Capture. So once you have the schema um, properly mapped through, once you have the document ready to process on the other side, once you have the auto filing set up, and your automation is good to go, exports the last time your users should be touching that document before sending it over here. Now, the only thing that we can do to improve this is to build that structure for us. So I've got a couple of minutes, so I'm going to very quickly just sort of introduce this idea. So we're going to go back over to our auto filing templates, of course I am, and we're going to go into our library properties. And now we're going to say that the auto filing can create a library object. So we're actually going to allow it to make a library object for ourselves instead of just using an existing one. In order to do that, I have to tell it what its source template is going to be. What are the folder properties that we're going to be able to use to make this work? So I'm going to go over to my accounting and AP, and we're going to choose a folder out of this. And in this case, I'm going to choose my 2022 folder because it has all the settings that I want it to have. So that's going to be the one that we're going to use, and I'm going to apply that. So that's going to be our, our properties template. So whatever's in that full, whatever the properties are for that folder, that's what's going to be creative when I make it. Now, I can also set the folder owner to the current user. So the person who's adding the document in becomes a folder owner. And I can also set the default schema to the current schema. So when I make this, the default is going to be whatever kind of document I'm putting in. I don't need either of those in this case. So I'm going to skip both of those. All right. Let's go over to our cabinet. We're going to keep this the same. It's going to be accounting. It's going to be a drawer. But I am going to make a folder group for myself. So we're going to make a folder group. And this time, we're going to make our folder group using the year for the document. So we're going to make a folder group. You need to first of all tell it that it's going to be a merge tag, then tell it it's going to be metadata, then tell it what kind of metadata it's going to be, in this case, invoice date. 
and then what value I'm looking for. In this case, I'm looking for the uh, the year, and then we're going to close this, oh, sorry, square bracket, close it off. All right, so perfect. So we have a description that's been put into this. This is for, we're gonna make a folder group for 2022 when the documents come in. So, or for whatever the year is gonna be for our test documents, we're gonna apply that. Great, so we've got our first part built. Now we're gonna go over to our folder, and this time I want the folder name to be the month for it. So we're going to update this, and we're going to choose a month. Now, for those of you who don't know in the regular expressions, 1M would be a single character month where possible. So instead of it for January, it'd be a one. But for December, it would be a 12 because it's two character, but there's no 01. If I wanted 01, I'd have to put MM. Now I get 01. Now maybe what I want this to say is 01 dash January. Well, we can do that. So we're gonna do MM dash and then I want to spell out what the month's actually going to be. So I want it to be, so for instance, right now I'm doing this in September. So I want it to be S, uh, I want it to be 09-SEP. That's going to essentially alphabetize my folders automatically. And it's going to allow me to leverage what I'm using for my terms. So that's perfect. We're going to apply that. So that's been built. We're going to ask now to validate. There we go. And it's validated it and it's run that through. And if I go to test values and it's going to give me that there and it's got the invoice date so it knows that it's good for the values that are coming in so that's great let's save it we've updated our template so now we're going to go back over into file hold and this time i'm going to go into my refresh all because i've updated my rule so let's take a look at what we have available here for folders so we can see i've got 2017 through 2023. So let's go back over here. And again, I'm testing my values. So let's change this to 2024. Yes, it's an invoice from the future. And now we're going to export this document with that new year built onto it. Okay, export's done. Now we're gonna come back over to file hold. Now, I don't know if this is gonna run quite as easily because I don't have a folder there and I'm not gonna see that folder until I do a refresh. So I usually like to wait a few seconds. And that, that's essentially why I'm talking right now and not doing anything. It's not just to fill time. It's actually to sort of give FileHold a chance to work. And now that I've given it a few moments, I'm gonna come up here to my file and we're gonna do refresh all. So again, now it's gonna do the refresh and I've now got a 2024 folder group that's been created over here. So we saw that that didn't exist before. And when I open this, there's an 03 March that matches the date for the invoice and there's my invoice in there. So we've used very, very simple merge tags to create enough information onto the document to be able to create some basic structure for this. And this is effectively now what I think 90% of the time auto filing needs to be because we're able to find the document's location based on a few key pieces of information that you've already tagged onto the documents. Because I'm using capture with this, the actual data entry that the user needs to do is very, very minimal now, and I've reduced most of that out. Now, by the way, I could have made a folder that was the year dash and then the month, or I could have used the uh, schema name, which in this case is AP invoices, and I could have used that to be, if I named my cabinet that, then I could have just used the schema name for that. So again, there's lots of values for this. Now, I'm not gonna pretend like uh, you're gonna get all of this, um, uh, you're not gonna remember all everything about merge tags, uh, but if you just go to our uh, to our website and type in merge tags, you'll see the first one over here, it has a full list of the different merge tags that are available. So you can see approval dates, file hold ID numbers, document version numbers, system names, all those different system values or SYS, as opposed to the metadata values, which is the uh, MD, which does that list here? Doesn't, oh, MD, there it is. Uh, replace, link, embed, expand. We're gonna deal with that a little bit more next time. So for now, this is as far as I wanted to take it. And I hope that was lots of information for folks.